Welcome to another home delivery of um, Journeys Through the Universe from the Ars Electronica Deep Space. I presented this program at 3.30 in the afternoon in German and now I'm gonna repeat it, but not exactly uh, in, in English for you. I'm using uh, one of our favorite programs in, which is already running in the background called Uniview and which presents the whole universe in 3D and it's a real-time simulation means not only the so-called terminator the border between day and night on earth is like it is in reality outside but also the planets are moving uh, the uh, moons are moving around the planets and um, in comparison to the program in the afternoon we will notice distinctive changes for example at Jupiter because we were able to spot the red uh, dot the, um, the red spot on Jupiter but it should be at the dark side right now Jupiter and Saturn are already in this image but uh, I guess just like me you would have troubles finding them because what we see in the background is uh, um, a not light polluted uh, sky night sky so if you would turn out all the lights in all of Europe that's the image you would get and uh, in the background is also the center of the Milky Way uh, the, we are in the constellation of Sagittarius here is the so-called pipe nebula and in this direction is Sagittarius A which is not a star but a supermassive black hole in the distance of 26 uh, light years from us so but this program assists us so if I zoom out by just tilting my Android phone I don't get only the uh, orbit of the moon um, I stop here for a second cause to, to mention this is the only distance um, humans have traveled. 24 humans have traveled and only 12 humans have been walking on the moon. So uh, it's a journey through the universe. This is the farthest we got and um, Jupiter and Saturn are in our solar system. So it's a very, very, very tiny journey in the, in the universe. We are far from reaching the borders of the universe today because today's topics are the gas giants so now we are now you see uh, Jupiter and Saturn uh, at the end of, of their moment at their momentary position in the night sky one in Sagittarius and I think uh, Saturn already uh, marched into Aquarius Another option we have in this program is we can beam ourselves. So, so just like uh, in some uh, um, television programs, I have uh, the possibility to just turn on, jump to Jupiter, and then I travel a, a distance of around four astronomical units in just a second. As I mentioned, the red spot is no longer visible. It moved on the dark, to the dark side of, of Jupiter. And uh, earlier, the moon Io was hiding behind Jupiter. Now it moved. And it, it is like, like, I always call it a, a tennis ball. This one, this moon is Io. Uh, what I did not mention in the program earlier, but uh, it's really important to me, very often you see sp uh, programs, TV programs about space. And there uh, people walk around like they normally would on Earth, on moons and planets and so on. First, you cannot mo mo uh, move on Jupiter. Jupiter is a gas giant, it doesn't have a hard surface. But it's also uh, the heaviest planet in the solar system means that you would experience 5G in the, in the vicinity of Jupiter. And Brian Cox, the physicist, once simulated that in something, 
he was spinning in, I don't know how, what the machine is called, but it simulated 5G and he was not able to lift his arm from his thighs. So uh, and if, if a spaceship with humans would go close by to, to Jupiter, you would probably not survive it, you couldn't move, and if your inner audience would be able to withstand that, I seriously doubt that. Uh, what you see on Jupiter, the surface of Jupiter, it's a big ball of uh, mostly hydrogen, but also some helium. They, this is a weather system. Those are storms. They come and go, uh, all of them besides the red spot. Ever since they watch Jupiter with telescopes, uh, they have been studying the, uh, the red spot. I think even Galileo saw it, but it has been really studied since uh, 1676, uh, 77. Um, and ever since it is visible, it's a major hurricane, uh, two times the diameter of, of Earth, and it's not going away. For, it hasn't been going away for more than 300 years now. What else is to be said about Jupiter? Jupiter has a gigantic magnetic field, very strong because uh, only on the surface the, the, the hydrogen is a gas, but in the, in the lower layers it's liquid and in even deeper it's a met metallic hydrogen, so it, it's, it's hard. And um, Jupiter's magnetic field spans on the uh, side which points away from the Earth up to the orbit of Saturn. Jupiter has now 79 known moons and this one is the innermost Galilean moon. It's called Io. I'm not able to, to zoom it in because it just moved out from the back of, of Jupiter. Uh, it looks like a ball of sulfur and that's exactly what it is. When the first probes went by Jupiter, uh, the pioneers and voyagers, and especially Voyager 1, uh, when it went by Io, they were really surprised to find a fountain of, uh, of lava swish, swishing into space for uh, a distance of 500 kilometers. Why is lava going so far into space? Um, Io is a little bit heavier than our, it has a little bit more mass than our moon, uh, but not, not, by far not the same mass as Earth. Uh, so, and why is, is Io? It, Io is the most volcanic object in the solar system. And why is it that active? Because it's in resonance with Europa, which I'm moving in here now, the second Galileo moon, and Ganymed, a one, two, four resonance. And also it has an elliptical orbit around Jupiter, means uh, uh, yeah, the gravity of Jupiter is really working on Io, which is the reason why it's so hot. We already moved the second Galileo moon in. This moon is called Europa. And it's very interesting because, as you can see, uh, this looks like our uh, um, North Pole, if it has still ice, which, because of climate change, might change in the future. But uh, this looks like it, it's a ball of ice, and below it is a um, is liquid, an ocean of liquid water, which might even be 100 uh, kilometers deep. They don't know for sure. But as long as Io is the most volcanic object, there's a good chance that there is volcanism on, on Europa as well. Yeah, that's not so easy to handle, because if you just move your finger a tiny little bit across the screen, uh, the, the, the moons zoom around. <laughs> uh, but there is a chance that uh, Europa has volcanism and there might be black smokers in the ocean of Europa. 
So this is the one candidate where scientists are looking for life and they would love it if they could send a probe to Europa which would drill through the, uh, the ice shield and maybe uh, explore the depths of the ocean of Europa, which may, might not be necessary because something like cryovolcanism might be happening on Europa only on the, on the side of all of those, the Galilean moons are tidally locked, means they always point the same side to their, uh, their host planet, just like our moon does to the Earth. And on the, the, the side pointing to Jupiter, they found fountains of stuff coming out of Europa. And if they are using spectroscopy, they could maybe find out what is coming out and with this determine if there could be life on, uh, on Europa. Okay, so uh, just one more moon, or uh, two more moons. Here we have Ganymede, the biggest moon of the solar system, bigger than planet Mercury. Ganymede is special because Ganymede has a magnetic field. There were plate tectonics uh, on Ganymede, if they are still active, is not certain. And as you see, the, uh, uh, those planets uh, are moving, uh, the Galilean uh, moons are moving around the equatorial plane of planet Jupiter. And here we got Io, Europa, Ganymede, and West Callisto hiding. Callisto. moved over to the right side. The other uh, moons you see, not all of them are moving in the same direction. Some of, of them are called retrograde, uh, so they're moving in the different direction. Uh, those are um, asteroids which uh, gravity of Jupiter has caught and forced into an orbit. Again, we are doing something. We are now jumping to Saturn. Saturn, the one planet which is known for its rings, but I have to point out all of the gas giants have rings. Jupiter has one, but that, uh, that it's almost only as dense as the smoke of a cigarette, so it's not visible and they found it only with probes when they went by. But Saturn's rings are very prominent. Why are they so visible even though they are often only 10 meters thick? And if you tilt it to the side, you almost can't see them. Uh, th those are ice crystals, ice clumps, ice rocks. And just like a snowfield glitters in the, in the sunlight, the same happens on, uh, on Saturn. Because uh, um, yeah, they, those, they, they often collide and then uh, move apart again. So this is, uh, they are always fresh surfaces. Those are the A, B, and, and C ring. Uh, the, the others are not visible in this program. And one thing I should point out this is the so called uh, Cassini partition. And this is caused by a moon called Mimas, which is in the back here right now at the moment. And Mimas is at a, a double the distance from Saturn as this uh, 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 yeah, gap here. And there's really nothing um, in there because when the, this, those particles move around Saturn's once, uh, every second move they, they uh, encountered the gravity of Mimas and were kicked out. When the probe Cassini went through here, they found nothing is in there. Okay, and then I'm going to look for one more moon, which is one of my personal favorites. Here we go, here comes Titan, the second biggest moon of the solar system. This orange ball here. Uh, uh, it rains on Titan, the seas and, and rivers, but uh, the... the um, the, the uh, temperature on the surface is around uh, 180 uh, degrees 
Celsius minus minus 180 degrees. So it's not water which is uh, flowing there, but liquid methane. By the way, they also discovered cryovolcanism volcanism on Titan. Uh, so it is volcanic, but those volcanoes don't spew lava. They spew ammonia and water ice. And um, one thing which we forgot in the earlier presentation, well, I want to show you Saturn's North Pole, because this is really special. There is, that looks just like in a beehive, so, sex x six, six, it's a hexagon. Thank you, dear technician, for helping me out. It, there is a hexagon. Um, this is a storm. This is kind of a standing wave. And um, this has been there for at least 30 years uh, since the probes went by. And they have no idea why uh, it developed on the other pole of Saturn. It's not the same. There is a big, big storm raging on Saturn's south pole and in the middle it has an eye of the storm now in the darkness but the whole of the earth would fit into the eye of this hurricane. Saturn is uh, the less dense planet on the, of the solar system. Uh, it would float off on, on water. It, it's also a, co a combination of hydrogen, mostly hydrogen and helium and other uh, elements but of course they don't know exactly what is inside. There might be an, an iron core, but we cannot be sure. But it's the star of the solar system, um, but also we reach the end of our time. Um, the, those were two of the gas giants, Uranus and Neptune are gas giants as well, but they are mostly mentioned as ice giants, and we will do a different program on the ice giant when we continue with our journey through the universe. Thank you for your attention, and I hope you visit us again with Us Electronica Home Delivery.